Welcome to our lecture today, where we'll be talking about AV block. As we know, AV block has three degrees. The first one is the first degree AV block, and to diagnose that, all you have to do is look at the EKG, and if you find the PR interval to be more than 200 milliseconds or more than one big box, then you have the diagnosis. And this usually means that the AV node is having some more delay than the usual AV node. Now, the next type of AV block is the second degree AV block. And we know that this is divided into two. The first one is called Mobits 1. The second one is called Mobitz 2. Mobitz 1 has another name which is called Winkeback. So, in order to differentiate the two, in Mobitz type 1, you will see that there's a P and a QRS, and then you can see a PQRS with a little bit of delay, and then you can see a PQRS with more delay and then all of a sudden there's a P that does not get conducted and then the rhythm goes again so the PR interval progressively increases and then all of a sudden there's a P wave but no QRS this is what we call a dropped QRS now in Mobitz 2 you can have a prolonged PR, but that PR interval stays the same, and then all of a sudden you have a P wave not followed by a QRS. And then this uh, pattern continues to return. What is the difference between those two other than on the EKG? If this is the heart, and second degree AV block, Mobitz type 1, Usually the block is at the AV node level, while the Mobitz type 2 is a little bit lower. Mobitz type 1 is benign, Mobitz type 2 is dangerous. And why is that? It's because your patient can go into third degree at any point. Now, I would like to note that sometimes you won't be able to describe whether this is a Mobitz type 1 or a Mobitz type 2. You can basically call it just 2 to 1 conduction. And this is basically when you have a P wave followed by QRS and then there's a P wave and then dropped. And then a P wave followed by QRS and then a P wave and dropped. Basically, you can't know if the PR interval gets prolonged or not because you only have two Ps and one QRS. You did not have the chance to see more P waves and to see how they conduct. So you literally cannot know if this is Mobitz 1 or Mobitz 2. And all you can say is that this is 2 to 1 AV conduction. Many people don't know about this and um, only a few books have it. And uh, I think everyone should know that if you cannot differentiate between the both, it might be just 2 to 1 AV block. And in order to differentiate them, you will have to do some maneuvers. Like either giving atropine, and if the conduction improves, it means that this is Mobitz 1. If the conduction gets worse or nothing happened, then this means that it's Mobitz 2. Now... The third type of AV block is what we call a third degree AV block. And if you see too many A's and little V's, think about it. If your patient is hypotensive and has those, think about it. But what makes this special? is that there is no connection in the AV node where you have boss number one 
which is the A, and you have boss number two, which is the V. They are not working together and they are not listening to each other. And sometimes you might see like the P waves are not conducted. And sometimes you might see something that is impossible to happen where the P wave is very close to the QRS. This P wave, it's impossible for it to get conducted to this QRS. And this will give you the other sign that this is a third degree or a complete heart block. Also, if you have a caliber, you will see that the V's march along and the A's march along. And what we mean by that is that they have the same interval just going on and on and on again. Now let's talk about clinical implications of those um, AV blocks. If you have first degree AV block, you really don't need a pacemaker. If you have second degree Mobitz 1, you don't need a pacemaker either. And you can prove that by putting the patient on the treadmill, making him walk for a short while and see their blood pressure. If their blood pressure does not go down, then they really don't need a pacemaker. But any patient with Mobitz type 2 or third degree heart block, you should put a pacemaker because otherwise the patient will become hypotensive, they might pass out, get into an accident, or even they um, uh, will not have organ perfusion. If you have a patient with 2 to 1 AV block, as we said, you might put them on a treadmill and see how they do. If, it's, if it becomes Mobitz type 1, then no pacemaker, but if you see evidence of Mobitz type 2, or if you see complete heart block, then they will need a pacemaker. And this is basically a summary of AV blocks. If you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like it, share it with your colleagues, and subscribe to our channel.